sitting nice and tall with your spine. Your hands can lie palm face up or palm face down, whatever is more comfortable. And then you're gently gonna close your eyes. So settle into your chair with a comfortable straight spine. Be aware of your body. Send down your grounding cord, usually from your root chakra, the base of your spine. Allow your awareness to run down your body and to your feet. Put attention on the bottoms of your feet. Open up your feet chakras and pull in earth energy. Relax your feet. Circulate the energy from the earth through and around your feet, your toes, your ankles. Slowly move that earth energy up to your shins, calves, knees, thighs, pelvis, all your organs. As this earth energy touches every cell, allow any tension to release down into the grounding cord back into the earth. Relax each and every cell and allow it to heal. Put your awareness on your spine and slowly allow the earth energy to flow up your spine, moving into the rib cage, into the muscles and organs, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your spleen, your pancreas. Gently pull that earth energy up into your shoulders and down your upper arms. Relax the upper arms, relax your elbows, your forearms, your wrists. Moving into the hands and fingers. Begin a spiral of energy around your neck and release everything in this area from which we express ourselves. Allow the energy to continue up into your jaw, releasing, relaxing, and healing into your chin, your lips, your eyes, your eyebrows, your forehead, temples, ears, in the back of your head where it joins the neck. Now we're at our crown of our head. Gently open up your crown chakra and allow the energy to flow out of your crown. So now you have a steady flow in from your feet, out through your crown. Feeling a balance of energy. Now we're gonna pull our attention to the center of our heads. Wherever you're at, begin to bend over your stomach over your thighs. And this is how you come out as you lift the chest, open the eyes. Take a second to just sit here. Sit in your body with any sensations. So that's just a little practice called cleaning out. We clean out every cell in our body. You can do it as much as you want. You can repeat that practice at any time of day. I just wanted to share that with you as we, got, as we get started today. So we'll meet on our mats in child's pose. So everybody come down to your mat if you're not already there. Bring your knees as wide as your mat and then bring your big toes to touch underneath you. Let your forehead rest on the mat. Walk your fingers forward. Remaining in that grounded state, we'll begin our ujjayi breathing. So close the lips, breathe, breathe in and out of the back of your throat. Like you're trying to fog up a window going, making that ocean wave sound. That's ujjayi breathing. We're gonna try and stick with that for class. If you ever notice that you can't hear your breath, 
tune back into that Ujjayi breathing. Having to listen to our own breath forces us to tune in. From child's pose, walk your hands over to the right. We'll sink into that left hip. Keep the hips down, side body stretch. So breathe into the outside of the left shoulder. Reach through the left fingertips. Forehead comes down to the mat still. Or whoever's comfortable with the head. And then we'll walk the hands through center. Take the same thing over to the left now. Reach through those right fingertips up to the corner of the room. Breathe through the right side of the body, through the ribs, down into that right hip. All right, we'll come back to center and push up to a tabletop. So your hips are gonna stack over the knees, shoulders under the wrists, and take your cat cow, warming up the spine. Inhale, drop the belly gaze, goes up. Exhale, arch the spine, now let the head hang heavy. Moving through these two poses at your own pace, feeling your spine. You can bend the elbows, exaggerate the movement as you transition. Maybe even keep the eyes closed for cat cow. Let the back of the neck release. You can sink into the hips a little bit. And then we'll take those hands farther in front of where they are right now and take your cat cow into really nice big hip circles. Coming all the way forwards and backwards, side to side on your mat. You're supporting yourself through your hands. When your hips go down to one side, maybe you sink into them a little bit. Breathe into the outside of the hip. All right, slowly moving back to tabletop. And then we're gonna tuck both toes of both feet and we're gonna sit back on our toes, opening up the bottoms of our, of our feet a little bit. So if it's okay to put that weight back on your heels, you can sit on the tops of your heels and then we'll take a shoulder stretch here. So, gosh, I'm not sure which is the best way to face. We'll start by bringing our arms out to the side and then you're gonna swing the right arm across the body, grab it with the left hand like a hook. And we have a nice shoulder stretch on the outside of that right shoulder. If it's too much weight on your balls of your feet, you can come up onto your knees. But if you like that foot stretch, you can keep that weight down on the heels. We'll release the right arm now, switch arms, swing them out. And then your left arm goes across the body, hook it with that right arm. Pull the arm into the body as much as you can. You should feel it all the way through the back of that arm up into the shoulder. Core is engaged. All right, we'll release that. Come back down to your tabletop position. We're gonna do a little quad stretch. So we'll start with the right side. You're gonna bring your right shin about 45 degrees out at an angle. We're gonna move the weight into our right hand and our, that right shin and then reach back with your left hand, grab your left foot. So you're balancing, you're opening your quad, kick harder into that left hand, breathe into that front side of the left shoulder. Lots of opening here. Nice heart opener. All right, release the shin down to the floor and the left hand. We'll swing on over to the other side. Take that left shin out at an angle. Move the weight into that left hand so you're nice and stable before you lift the right hand, right foot. Going for that quad stretch, kick as hard as you can into your right hand. Feel this whole right side of the body opening up. All right, nice job, return back to tabletop. And then we'll tuck both knees at the same time here so you're in tabletop or tuck both toes, lift knees off the mat. Warming up the core, building some heat. 
And then next inhale, sends the hips to the sky. First down dog of class. So first down dog of class, you can walk your legs, bending one knee and dropping it across the body. Breathing into the back of one leg at a time. We'll take five to 10 breaths here. First down dog of class. We'll talk about foundation a little bit. So spread your fingers really wide. Press into the palms of each hand. Think about rolling your shoulders in towards each other just a little bit like your, um, the insides of your armpits want to see each other. And then pull your ears away from your shoulders to create length in the spine. All right, we'll inhale that right leg high to the sky. Exhale, knee touches right elbow. Give it a little tap and then inhale the leg long. Next exhale, knee comes to the center of your chest. Hold that, hold the knee really high, don't drop the foot, and then inhale the leg long. Next one, we're going across the body. So all the way over to that left elbow, give it a little tap, and then inhale that leg high to the sky. All right, fourth exhale, come, your foot comes to the front of the mat and you lower your back leg for a low lunge. So you can keep your hands down on the mat, framing the right foot. Lots of options for low lunge. If this feels comfortable for you and you want more stretch in that psoas in the front of that left hip, maybe you push your hands into your knee, the right knee lifting the chest. I use a block in this pose to keep my chest lifted. I press it into my free hand. You're really breathing into that front part of the left leg. Try and tuck your tailbone down to the earth a little bit. It feels like you're pushing the lower end of your pelvis forward, getting more into that psoas. All right, next exhale, half splits. Sink your hips towards your left heel. Breathe into your right leg, the back of that right leg. Flex your right toes towards the face. And then we're gonna walk our hands over to the right, getting into the IT band, outer side of that right leg. You should feel it pulling from your hip bone through that quad down on the right side of the calf. Big stretch here. Every inhale, find length in the spine. And then use your exhales to settle in a little deeper. Again, you can have a block anytime under your hands. Helps keep the chest lifted. All right, bring the hands back to center, framing the right foot. We're gonna inhale that knee back, or back into bending that right knee, and then inhale, sweep the hands up. You're in a high lunge now. So we're um, on the ball of the back foot, deep bend in that front knee. Try and pick your left kneecap up and lift it into the quad to force that left leg to be straight. And then check out the, your back foot. Try and stack the heel on top of the ball of the foot. I know it's hard to see that, but if you come up higher onto the ball of that left foot, you'll find more of a stretch. All right, exhale, easy twist. Left hand's gonna drop on the inside of the right foot. Right hand high to the sky. Twisting out the spine, gaze follows the right fingers. You're strong through the legs still. All right, stay here, or you can swing your right foot to stack on top of the left for side plank. Lots of modifications in side plank. You can drop the inner leg, or you can lift that top leg up into the air. Keep using those obliques on the left side to keep those hips lifted. All right, we drop the right hand to the mat. Take it through your first chaturanga or knee and down dog. Moving nice and slow. First vinyasa of class. Inhaling up dog cobra pose. And exhale back to down dog. We'll inhale the left leg high to the sky. Exhale, left knee, left elbow, building up so much internal heat. Good job, inhale that right leg goes long behind you. Exhale, knee through center to your chest. Don't drop the foot, just hold the knee as high as you can and inhale the leg long. Next exhale, knee goes across the body. Try and touch the right elbow or lift it even higher to the right 
uh, shoulder. Inhale the leg long. You know where we're going. Fourth exhale, left foot plays between the hands. Drop the back knee, low lunge. Settle into the stretch now. We're breathing into that front side of the right leg this time. So maybe you grab that prop or that block, however you like to get into this low lunge position. You can have those hands down on the mat or up. Pressing into the knee and the block to lift the chest. Every exhale, let it ground you a little more and send more uh, releasing into your hips. All right, next exhale, half split, send your hips back towards your right heel, straighten into the left leg, flex those left toes back towards your face. And then if you want that IT band stretch, let's walk our hands over to the left this time. Again, maybe you have that block. Maybe you have a chair, a different kind of prop in your house. Just breathing into a straight spine and then folding, deeper folding over the left leg. Keep walking those fingertips until you find a nice stretch. All right, we bring the hands back to center. You're gonna come back to that low lunge position, but then inhale, sweep the hands up, lift the back knee, high lunge. We made it to high lunge, so deep bend in the left knee. Hips are square to the front of the room. That back knee, if it's, if it's bending down towards the mat, lift the kneecap into the leg. You should still feel that low lunge stretch, like we're still stretching that front of that right leg. Shoulders out of the ears. And then next exhale, right hand drops to inside the left foot. Left hand goes high to the sky. Keep those strong legs, squeeze your glutes together. Gaze goes left or up towards the left fingertips. Option to stay here or side plank. Sweep, sweep the top leg on top of the bottom leg. Modification to drop the bottom shin or make it harder by lifting your top leg. Use that core. All right, slowly and controlled, left hand comes to the mat, take it through, chaturanga. Or maybe in down dog, you can skip it. Exhale, those half push up. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, hips high to the sky, down dog. All right, we're gonna bend really deeply into the knees. Bring your big toes to touch. And we're gonna take five hops to the top of your mat. So try and take five hops to get there. Lifting your hips as high as you can with every hop. Almost getting your hips to stack over the shoulders. When you get there, we'll meet in ragdoll pose. So bring those toes out to about hips with distance. Let your belly hang out on the thighs. Grab the elbows. Ragdoll pose. Sway side to side here, releasing your low back. So ragdoll is more of a low back releaser than a leg stretch. Maybe shake out your head, shake out your head. Um, yes and no. Releasing the neck, you don't have to hold up the head here. If you want to straighten into one leg at a time and wrap all you can. Making it your practice at all times. Whatever feels good. Slowly we'll roll up one vertebrae at a time. Let your head be the last thing to come up. And we meet in mountain pose. Roll your shoulders up to the ears a couple times. Let them roll down your back. Just breathing into the shoulders. Up to the ears and then let them roll down your back. And then for mountain pose, we're actually going to come into chair pose. So uh, I like to bring my big toes to touch for any kind of chair pose. My big toes touch and then your heels can have a little space between them. But some people will prefer chair pose with feet wider. 
So getting ready for chair pose. Bend the knees, inhale the hands forward, sink the hips, chair pose. From here, tuck your tailbone down to the earth a little bit. Make sure you can see your big toes so your, your knees aren't tracking too far forward. Send the hips lower, hands higher. Exhale, prayer hands twist right. So your outside of your right, uh, left elbow comes to the outside of the right knee. Press into your palms and then gaze tries to go up to the ceiling over the right shoulder. Keep pressing into the palms, trying to get your thumb to meet the center of the chest. Inhale, back to center, back to chair pose. Exhale, same thing, twist left. So the outside of the right elbow hooks onto the outside of the left knee. Goes left. Try to keep your knees glued together. A lot of times that right knee will try and shoot out to the front of the mat. Try to keep it parallel with the left knee. Inhale, back to center. We'll come all the way up to standing. You can take a back bend if you want. Hands reaching up to the sky behind you. And slowly exhale, forward fold. When you get there, inhale, half lift, shine the heart forward, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, plank pose, hold plank pose. Now lowering to chaturanga, hold plank. We're gonna do a little bit more strength here. You're gonna bring your right knee to the outside of that right elbow, give it a tap, shoot it back five times. Knee taps right elbow, and then heel goes to the back of the room. One more. All right, when you get there, we're just gonna come into lizard pose. So drop the right foot on the outside of the right fingertips. Drop your back knee. Lizard pose is a big uh, hip opener here. So it's not like that low runner's lunge where your chest is over the thigh. You want to bring your foot almost all the way off your mat on the outer edge of your mat. Roll into the outer edge of the foot. Push that right knee away from you. And then lizard pose has options. You can come down to your forearms. You can come down to one forearm. And then those of you who have taken my classes before, I like to offer a quad stretch here. If you wanna lift your left heel towards your low back, reach around and grab your left foot, maybe with the right hand. It could be your left hand too, just depending on how you're in lizard pose. But offering a quad stretch, pretty intense quad stretch. Still settling into lizard. All right, release really slowly. You're gonna bring your hands back to that really strong plank position. Once your hands are under the shoulders, lift the back knee. You'll shoot your right foot back to meet the left. We'll do the same thing other side. Left knee comes to the left elbow or even try and get it to that left shoulder. Try and get that left knee as high as you can on the arm. So five times going forwards and backwards, working the obliques. After five, we'll drop the left foot on the outside of the left hand, lizard pose. Same thing, other side, drop the left or the right knee. This time you'll turn your chest over to face the left knee. Push that left knee away from you. Rolling farther onto the outer edge of that left foot. Maybe dropping down to a forearm or both forearms. Lizard pose will look different for everyone. Lots of options. And then also that quad stretch, this time the right heel will come towards your low back. Really slowly release out of lizard pose, bringing your hands underneath the shoulders on your mat. You'll have to lift that right leg, shoot the left foot back to meet the right. And then we'll do this chaturanga together. So from plank, 
Everybody do a half push up. Keep your elbows into the body. So I don't want to see elbows out wide, and I don't want to see your chest drop below your triceps. So half push up, and then swing your chest forward for up dog. Try and keep the thighs off the mat. Reach your shoulders or your ears out of the shoulders, and then exhale, down dog. Hips go high to the sky, walk it out. All right, bend the knees on the bottom of that next exhale, gaze between the hands, walk, step, or hop to the front of your mat. Maybe you try those five hops again. Inhale, half lift, lengthen the spine, shine the heart forward. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, release our reverse swan dive all the way up to standing. Fingers come overhead. Exhale, hands through heart center and down by your side. We're going to come back into chair pose. So bring those big toes back to touch again if that's your preferred chair pose. Bend the knees, sweep the hands forward. We'll meet in chair pose. Sink the hips as low as you can. This time when we exhale, twist right. Same thing that we did before, but with the prayer hands, this time maybe you take your hands wide. So left hand down to the floor, right hand up to the sky. Getting a little bit more of a spinal twist here. Really working the legs. Keep breathing into it. And then we'll inhale back to center, bring the hands back forward to chair. Exhale, same thing, left side. So you might start with that prayer hands to get the right elbow hooked on the outside of the left knee. And then from there, you can open the arms. Keep those hips low. Lots going on here. Nice job. We inhale back to center all the way to standing. You can bring the hands overhead for that back bend if you like. And then slowly coming forward, hinge up the hips, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, shine the heart forward. Exhale, plant the hands, take it through vinyasa or maybe in down dog. All right, inhale, right leg goes high to the sky. Exhale, plant the right foot between the hands, come up to a high lunge. Deep bend in your front knee. And then from here, I'm not sure if you guys can see me. <laughs> so from high lunge, we're gonna inhale, bring the left knee parallel to the floor. So we come to standing on the right foot, this is your inhale, and then exhale, warriors three. Kick your left heel towards the back of the room. Yogi's choice for hands. You can have hands at heart center, airplane arms, balancing on that right foot. You're still grounding through your foot chakra on the bottom of the right foot. Left heel reaching towards the back of the room. Drop the hands to the floor, standing splits. Left foot goes to the ceiling. Right leg is straight as possible. Maybe challenge your balance by lifting up one hand, bringing it to the back of the right calf. Standing splits. All right, we're gonna drop the left foot behind the right foot so that your pinky toes come to touch. So try and get your left foot up as high as you can on outside of the right foot. Pinky toes will kind of touch. Your front knee will be more bent than the back leg. Inhale to lengthen through the spine, and then exhale, forward fold. So I like to walk my hands side to side in this pose, gripping my hands onto the floor, breathing into the outside of those legs, your IT bands, down into the calves, and then also breathing into your side body through the rib cage and through the shoulder. If you get a nice grip on the floor, you can kind of pull yourself into an upper body stretch as well.
All right, let's come back to center. Unwrap that left foot from the right foot. We'll step back through, um, step back to plank. And then you can take it through your vinyasa or go meet back and down dog. Exhaling chaturanga, inhaling up dog. Exhaling down dog. When you get there, same thing, other side. Inhale, left leg goes high to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, plant the foot. Sweep the hands forward, high lunge. Settle into those hips, we've been here before. And then your next inhale is gonna bring that right thigh parallel to the floor, coming to a nice standing position. And then exhale, right heel goes to the back of the room. Same thing, other side. Grounding through your right, your left foot. Try and straighten both legs. Squeeze your glutes into your, your midline. Yogi's choice for those hands. Full expression of warrior three, hands would be reaching forward. All right, drop the hands to the floor, standing splits. Right foot goes high to the sky. Straighten into the left leg as, most, as much as you can. And then lift one hand off the floor, bring it to the back of the left leg. Challenging those little ankle muscles on the left side. And then we drop the right foot behind the left this time. Same stretch, but your left foot's in front this time, so your left knee will probably be a little more straight than the right. When you get there, try and do an inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. It just helps you get a little deeper into the stretch. You can do that as many times as you like. And then walk your hands side to side. Let the head hang heavy. You don't need to use any neck muscles to keep the neck lifted. Let your head hang heavy wherever it's comfortable. All right, we are going to bring those feet back out hips with distance. We're kind of in this position that is preparing for a handstand practice. So I'm gonna offer that for a couple minutes. So basically you bring your hands on the floor right under where your shoulders are. So your shoulder width distance. And then from here, you can bring either foot to the sky, left or right, doesn't matter. And then a good practice for handstand is just hopping off of one foot at a time. So if your right foot's in the air, try and keep the right foot in the air the whole time, hopping off the ball of the left foot. See what it feels like to get some hang time, completely being supported by your hands, I'm trying to get those hips to stack over the shoulders. It's a little bit of handstand practice. Nice job, I can see a few of you guys. <laughs> it's hard to, it's definitely hard to read the class when it's all through a screen. <laughs> but all right, keep playing with it or whenever you're ready. We'll meet in a child's pose. We'll take a little breather, bring those knees back wide on your mat. So again, if you wanna play with that handstand, keep going. We're gonna take a rest in child's pose. Couple options for a different version of a, of a child's pose if you're looking for it. One thing you can do is bend the elbows, bring the hands together overhead. That gives you more of a tricep stretch if you're looking for that. If you're doing a lot of chaturangas, your triceps might really like that stretch.
All right, we'll slowly lift back up through tabletop and then all the way to down dog. Nice and slow, listen to that body. No rush. Only back and down dog. Hip side of the sky. Gaze back between the knees. And then we're gonna walk our feet just like five inches forward closer to your fingers. Um, but you're, you're still in down dog. You just have a bit of a shorter stance. And then you're gonna take your left hand towards the middle of your mat. So you're strong through the left hand. Your right hand's gonna go back and grab the outer edge of your left calf. So you're in like a down dog spiral twist. Your gaze is under your left shoulder. Strong through that left arm. Find that position on the mat where you don't feel like you're gonna fall out of it or your shoulder's not hurting or pinching. Grab the outside of that left calf and get a little spinal twist here. All right, slowly release that right hand. You're gonna replace the left hand with the right hand in the center of your mat. And then your left hand's gonna reach to the outer edge of the right calf this time. Maybe it reaches the thigh or the foot, wherever you can hook that left hand. Remembering we're in a shorter down dog pose, so it allows us to reach for that leg if you need to make the stance shorter. No worries. Gaze goes under your right shoulder. Use the strength of the hand to pull you into the twist. All right, slowly release the right or the left hand back towards the front of the mat, bottom of your next exhale, then into the knees, and we'll walk to the front of the mat. When you get there, inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to standing. Fingertips come overhead, and then exhale, hands through heart center down by your side. So I want to do one last standing balancing pose with you guys today. It's dancer's pose. So I don't know how this is going to go over the internet. It's a lot easier to teach in person, but dancer's pose is a nice quad stretch. I got a thumbs up. All right, we got this. We warmed, we warmed up our quads a little bit. So let's start by grounding into the left foot. And then you're going to kick your right heel up towards your glute and grab your right foot with your right hand. So you're in a quad stretch here. Try and bring your heel to the glute. Inhale, left hand comes up to the sky by your left shoulder. Now keep the shoulder out of the ear, just reaching up through the fingertips. Inhale to create a ton of length in your spine. And exhale slowly, your chest drops towards your mat. Kick up into that right foot. So this is dancer's pose. Your left hand's reaching forward. You're kicking as hard as you can with that right foot. Keep kicking. The harder you kick, the more balance you'll have. Breathe into the quad, the front of the right shoulder. Keep kicking. If you fall out of it, that's okay. Keep kicking. Beautiful dancer's poses. Nice job. Release the right side. Maybe you shake it out a little bit. Super challenging pose. Super fun. You look like a little ballerina. Even you, Julian, and we ballerinas. <laughs> All right, left side, ground into the right foot. We'll kick the left heel towards the glute, grab the outside of the foot with the left hand. Breathe into that quad. You already have a quad stretch here. And then inhale, right hand to the sky. Nice and relaxed through the shoulders. Inhale, breathe in a nice big sip of air. Exhale, let the chest fall towards the front of the mat. The harder you kick with the left hand into the left foot, or left foot into the left hand, the higher you'll go with your spine, and the longer you'll stay balanced. So this is a huge back bend here, huge quad stretch. Keep reaching forward with your right hand. Your drishti, your focal point with your gaze is on something not moving. Really use your gaze as a focus. Kick harder, kick harder, and release. Nice job, maybe shake out that side now. Woo, all right, we're gonna cool it down. Nice job. 
We'll do one last vinyasa. So meet in a mountain pose at the top of your mat, grounding through the feet, kneecaps lift up into the quads, neutral pelvis, hands shining forward. Together we'll inhale, bring the hands overhead. Exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, shine the heart forward. Exhale, plant the hands, take it through your vinyasa or me in down dog. And from down dog, we'll come into a pigeon pose. So bring the right knee to behind the right wrist. Settle down that right shin on the front of your mat and you walk your left leg back behind you as far as you can. First, we'll walk the hands in towards the chest to breathe into the front side of our bodies. And then exhale, settle down into pigeon pose. You can bring both forearms to a mat, the mat, one forearm. You can stay lifted through the hands. The sensation here is we're breathing into the glute on the right side. And if, excuse me, if you feel any pinching or something going on in the hip or the knee that is not a nice stretch, roll out a pigeon pose and take just a figure four. So taking a moment here to really settle into our first longer stretch of class, pigeon pose. I'll offer just a couple things since everybody's at a different place in their practice. If you want to go, if you want to keep with that quad stretch today, you can lift the left heel towards the body, reach around with a hand, grab onto the left foot. This is pretty intense quad stretch, but you can come all the way up into king pigeon too. Just settling into pigeon pose. Breathe into the hip, relax tension around the hip area. Relax tension around all other areas of your body. Remembering our practice today of cleaning out every cell. All right, we're going to push the hands into the mat to lift the chest. Roll onto that right hip and you're gonna swing this right leg all the way around until your left foot lands on the, outs, on the mat or on the floor on the outside of the right knee. We're gonna come into a bit of a spinal twist. So once your left foot is over on the outer edge of the right knee, inhale the hands to the sky, and then exhale, we'll twist to the left. So left hand goes behind you, right elbow or right arm somewhere might hook onto the outer edge of the left leg, the left thigh that's bent, and then gaze goes left over the shoulder. Breathe into a nice tall spine. First we lengthen, then we twist. So breathe into the spine, pull the top of the head to the ceiling. Every exhale, twist a little deeper. All right, we're gonna bring the chest back to center. Now bring your two hands over to the right. Let them fall to the mat. A little bit of a counter pose. Just lowering the chest a little bit. Just a little bit of a counter stretch. And then we'll release these feet out from under us. Grab the back of the thighs and we'll rock a few times along the spine. As long as that feels good. Eventually, we're gonna roll all the way back to down dog. So you might have your feet cross underneath you. Roll over the knees. Plant the hands into the mat. We got a knee back in down dog, however you wanna get there. All right, left knee goes to behind the left wrist this time. Pigeon pose, left side. 
Bring that shin as high up on the mat as you can and then wiggle that right foot back behind you, long through the right leg. First, we'll walk the hands towards the body, pressing into the mat to breathe into the front side of the body. And exhale, settle into your pigeon pose. Eating yourself out, doing the same thing you did on the other side. Move slowly into the pose, but then when you get there, let gravity do the work to help you get even farther. Just relax every muscle around the hip and the knee. Kind of like you're melting down to the mat. I offered that quad stretch on the other side if you want to take that, if you haven't already. Only if it's in your practice. Slowly pushing up out of um, pigeon pose. We're gonna rock our weight over onto the left hip, swing the right foot around until the right foot lands on the outside of the left knee. Finding this funky twisted position. We'll inhale our hands overhead. Exhale, twist right this time. Hook the left arm on the outside of the right leg. Hand, right hand drops behind you and then gaze follows the right shoulder. Use the strength of your left arm pushing into the leg to help you add, add some twist. Inhaling to find length and exhaling to twist, wringing out the spine. Slowly come back to center. We'll take our two hands over to the left, press them down into the mat, lower the chest, a little bit of a counter pose. Nice job. And then we'll take our legs out and we'll meet lying on our backs. So maybe you grab the backs of the legs, roll down one vertebra at a time. Once you get there, hug the knees into the chest, wrap your forearms around the shins, give yourself a nice big hug. You can bring the forehead up to the knees, crunch your abs, really squeeze everything as tight as you can. And then we'll release to a happy baby, grabbing the outsides of the feet, or maybe you grab the insides of the feet. Play around with your happy baby. You can keep rocking side to side. Do have your chin tucked down towards the chest a little bit. Try and keep your spine nice and long and happy, baby. Try and keep your whole spine connected to the mat. So a lot of times in happy baby, our low spine, our hips want to lift up. So it's a challenge to keep your whole spine connected to the mat while pulling those knees to either side of your body. All right, we'll bring the knees back to center and then we'll um, do a supine twist. So we'll start by dropping the knees over to the right Pick up the hips, lift them a little bit back towards the center. Left hip stacked right on top of the right hip and then let the gaze fall to the left.
Another great pose to practice that cleaning out uh, meditation because you're nice and still. Thinking about every cell in the body. Slowly bring those knees back to center. Find a moment of stillness on your mat, some symmetry in the body. Before you come into supine twist, other side. You can bring the knees into the chest and then drop them over to the left. I like to pick up my hips, lift them back towards the center of the mat. It's a lot easier to stack the right hip on top of the left after that little repositioning move. And then try and wiggle both shoulders on the mat, both shoulder blades. Gaze goes right. All right, come back to center. Find that moment of stillness, just letting the sensations sink in. And then we're going to end with um, a, shoulder a shoulder standard plow pose to get a little reverse blood flow action. If either of these are in your practice, feel free to take them for five to ten breaths. And I know sometimes not everybody likes to have their hips up in the sky. So um, find a nice spot in your room where you can just sit with your booty against the wall, feet up the wall. So you don't have to lift the hips to shoulder stand or plow pose, but you can just sit with the feet resting on the wall to get that reverse blood flow to the heart. If you're in shoulder stand, Really try and challenge yourself, holding it for that full five to 10 breaths before releasing. And then if you're in plow pose, try and straighten into both legs. Trying to get the feet to touch the mat above your head. You might feel really constricted in the breathing in your throat and that's okay. Slowly roll out one vertebrae at a time, if you haven't already. And at this time, I'll offer you to take any last stretches that are calling your name today. You can even get up off your backs, really taking any last stretches, any part of the body, before we meet in Shavasana, final pose of class. And then we'll meet lying on our backs. Find a nice tall spine. Tuck your chin down toward the chest a little bit to create length through the neck. Let the toes roll out to the side. Let the hands fall down by your sides. Palms face up to receive, palms face down to ground. For the next few minutes, I offer a complete peace with yourself in Shavasana. Observing your thoughts, but not attaching onto any single one of them. 
just recognizing that thoughts might come. Begin to invite movement back into the body by wiggling the fingers and toes. Maybe rock your head side to side. Nice slow movements. Let the wiggles run up your feet, your legs, up your fingers into the arms, maybe a little shoulder movement. And then when you're ready, rolling over onto your favorite side, use your arm as a pillow. Taking a moment to sit in this piece, noticing yourself waking back up. And then slowly push yourself up to a comfortable seated position. We'll meet sitting cross legged, facing each other on the canvas. And then one last inhale, we'll sweep the hands overhead, fingertips touch. Exhale, thumbs come to your third eye center, your forehead. Thank you so much for joining me on this Wednesday afternoon. It's been so fun to see you all and share practice. The Light of Me season on is lighting you today, each and every day. Namaste.